Ladies and gentlemen, hybrid work model is likely to be the new norm beyond 2021. Is your business ready for a hybrid work model? The two gentlemen will be presenting one after another. If you have questions, you may type in the chat board. At the end of the two presentations, I will present your questions to the speakers and they can proceed to answer via audio. Please indicate your question is directed to which speaker, so I'll know. After the Q&A session, we will be announcing the three lucky draw winners of RM50 Grab Food Vouchers. So do stay till the end, just in case you're the lucky winner and get to enjoy a nice meal at home with your family, courtesy of System Management Services and Rambo Heart. Without further ado, let me bring on the first speaker, Mr. Andy Eshen. Andy is an international technology management consultant with over 34 years experience in the public sector, telecommunications and financial services industries. Andy, over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi from Dubai. <clears throat> Thanks for coming to our webinar. So my name is um, Andy Aishan and um, I'm coming to you live from the SMS uh, Dubai office. And I'll be giving a, a brief introduction on what we all have become used to in the last uh, 16 months. At least uh, those of us who have been lucky enough uh, to be able to, to work from home. And uh, the question that we all have to face now <clears throat> is what will we be doing once the pandemic comes to an end? If it ever comes to an end, well, let, let, let's hope so. So once it's all over, what will the new normal look like? Will we all be going back to the office like before? Or will we be continuing to work from home or what is now being referred to as the hybrid work model, will we be working a mixture of uh, working from home and working from the office? So the hybrid work model, just a fancy name, probably given by a consulting company. And uh, in fact, I'll be making uh, use of a survey that was done by the Boston Consulting Group uh, earlier this year um, in, in the United States. And uh, based, based on that um, survey, it is um, unlikely that we are going to be going back to the office 100% of the time. And it is uh, equally unlikely that we will be staying at home 100% of the time. Only between 10 and 20 percent uh, think that uh, that's that's what they would like to do. The the vast majority, 70 to 80 percent of the people that were interviewed, uh, prefer to work a hybrid model, and that is um, working a mixture of uh, home and office. The question is, how much? So the majority agree on three days, but three days where? And that's where the differences come in. So this, this survey was done in the US, <clears throat> like where, where most surveys are done. And uh, it included uh, big companies like Microsoft, um, Google, Apple, Amazon, and so on, but also small and medium companies. And it was across uh, all industries. So they, they split them into employees and managers and 55% uh, of the employees say that they prefer to work three days at home and two days in the office. Whereas on the manager side, 68% say they would like their staff to come back to the office three days a week and work from home two days a week. So there's uh, the survey, the survey result. They are American, but um, I think it's quite um, possible that this, this will be pretty similar uh, all around the world. So when asked, give us the top, the top four reasons why you would want to go back to the office. 
So the employees and the employ employers gave their four reasons. The interesting part about that was that uh, both agreed on two reasons for going back to the office. One is for collaboration purposes, and the second one is for meeting clients. So let's let's look at these two reasons in a bit more detail. There are three three points to be made for collaborating. Especially these days, and especially if you're working in, in IT. Most of the work that we do today is uh, too complex to be done by a single person. Maybe we can still do single tasks by ourselves, but to do to complete a whole process for a client to solve a client's problem. It's very rare that one person is able to do that. And normally we do this as a team and we leverage the strength of each team member. And it's very hard to do that when you are sitting at home all, all by yourself. The second point is that the, the amount of information, I mean, we are all suffering from information overload these days. And uh, no single individual is capable of digesting all of the information that is needed to do one's work these days. So working as a team, being able to share that information within the team members is obviously uh, the way to go. And uh, we'll, we'll have a, a, a better chance at um, managing that information overload. The third point is that um, we are all expected to be creative, uh, imaginative, uh, innovative, and it's very difficult to be creative when you're sitting in front of a computer screen all day and uh, cannot cannot share your 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 thoughts, your ideas. But uh, when we are together as a team in the office, we can get immediate feedback. We can collaborate on a particular problem. We can design new things. We can bounce back um, our ideas, uh, bounce off each other, and we can explore so many more possibilities and ideas. So these are, I think, three pretty good reasons for going back to the to the office. The second reason that was given that they both agreed on was uh, meeting clients. Now, I'm pretty sure that um, none of your customers have uh, visited you at your home while you were on lockdown, and uh, you probably haven't visited anyone in the office either. But when we meet clients, we like to meet them in the office, either their office or our office. But somebody has to be in the office. So the reason why we like to meet clients in the office is because that's where our facilities are. That's where we have conference rooms. We have projection screens. We have comfortable chairs. We have refreshments. And we want to be able to impress our clients with the, the quality of our office furniture. Yeah, the quality of our office is a reflection of the quality of the work that we are going to do for you, Mr. or Mrs. Uh, client. The other reason is that we want to reassure our clients that we are we are not uh, a fly by night company. We're very well established and uh, we're, we're not not a one man show. So I want to be able to introduce my colleagues to you, the rest of my team and uh, give you that reassurance that uh, we can all work together as a team. We all have the skills. We have the expertise. We are all willing to help to uh, solve your problem or to meet your requirements. So none of the above items can be done professionally from home. And so it's um, it makes sense that uh, meeting clients is uh, one of the chief reasons why we would want to go back to the office. So the conclusion, the office is not going to disappear. I don't think so. Um, number two, some form of hybrid working model is likely to be implemented because um, most people want it on both sides, both the workers and the uh, managers um, are all going to opt for a, uh, a, a, a working model. And um, 
there's likely going to be more than one working model. So there could be there could be multiple, and it's something that we can discuss. But uh, the point is, the main point of this presentation is to get you to start thinking uh, about which hybrid working model would you like to would, would you prefer or would you like to be involved in? And uh, collaboration and meeting clients is still important even after this pandemic is over. So thank you very much for your attention for your time. Now, let us bring on our second speaker, Mr. Nicholas Leung. Nicholas, Nicholas is the Business Unit Head of System Management Services with four years of experience in the information technology and services industry. Before heading into the IT and services industry, he was called to the Malaysian Bar and worked as a litigator for three years. Over to you, Nicholas. Thank you, Francis, for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'll be talking about some of the challenges of hybrid working models and how ExoShare is able to tackle them. But before I go into that, right, let's talk about who we are. Um, we are System Management Services, and we were established in 1997. So we do have more than 23 years of experience in the ICT industry. Over the years, SMS's focus has been in data management, cloud computing, and cybersecurity. And one of SMS's data management solutions is ExoShare, which is what I'll be presenting on today. And we'll be going through what are some of the challenges that companies face when having a hybrid working model, and how does ExoShare help companies solve these challenges? Now, before we go into the challenges of hybrid working models, I wanted to talk about a survey conducted by Gartner on the 3rd of April in 2020. This survey involved 317 CFOs and finance leaders. And in that survey, it was found that 74% of companies will move at least 5% of their workforce to permanently remote positions post COVID-19. Now, the reason for this is due to the pressure from the companies to tightly manage costs, firstly, and the re realization of cost benefits of having a remote workforce. So with companies moving towards a hybrid working model, right? these companies are bound to be faced with challenges. So what are some of these challenges that you might be asking? So the challenges, we have narrowed it down to five, uh, perhaps there are more, but these are the five striking ones that have come to our attention as we speak to many customers uh, regarding ExoShare. Now, the first is the first challenge of a hybrid working model, like Andy also mentioned, was collaboration. So the question that comes to people's minds is that when I have a hybrid working model, how are my team members or staff going to collaborate on documents? When on, one of them perhaps is in Johor Bahru and another is in KL. So how do I keep track? of things like version history of particular documents, right? So it makes collaboration very tricky when you have a hybrid working model in place. The second challenge that uh, re regards to the challenge of a hybrid working model is the management of data, right? As staff and team members are working at different locations, company data is being shared everywhere. So how do you keep track of what data is being shared and to who uh, put in restrictions to prevent data leakage? So who, where is the data being shared to? Who is the data being shared to? And how are you able to, how are companies able to restrict and prevent data leakage and data loss in this current era where data is so easily shared and um, deleted if there is any, if in a situation like that? So how does companies prevent such a situation? That's what we're gonna be talking about as well. Now, the third challenge is the lack of permission or role settings. Now, even if in this current era where there are a lot of file sharing platforms out there, some of them do have such settings where they give you permission and role settings. But most of the time, it's only the in-house team uh, that has access and control to such settings. These settings do not trickle down to the user's level, 
So how does a team member then grant another team member permission to access a certain folder or file without having to go through the in-house IT team as it can be very time consuming and very inefficient to do so. Now, the fourth challenge that we're going to look at is also in the hybrid working model is the difficulty in sharing files securely. So how do you share large files to internal team members and external recipients? Now, there are many file sharing software out there, some which are free. So those software allows you to share your files to other people. However, the question that you have to ask yourself is, how secure are they? Do they have any security features to ensure that the recipient is the correct recipient of the file? Do they allow you to approve or reject the sharing of private and confidential files? Now, the last challenge that we're going to talk about at the, uh, towards the end of this uh, webinar series is the challenge of receiving files securely. Now, uh, are you, as a user within a company, are you able to receive large files easily from external parties? Uh, and are you able to verify that the person sending you a document is the authorized or right person? So based on these five challenges, we we'll, uh, we are going to look more in depth of what these five challenges entail and how Azoshare is then able to provide a solution to these challenges. So let's talk about collaboration. So what are some of the collaboration challenges that a company will face while implementing a hybrid working model? Now, the first thing is messy collaboration by emails. I think we are all too familiar with this. Documents are being collaborated uh, through email, right? And it is scattered and there is not a single file repository where all these documents are stored or shared from, right? So as everyone is editing the documents from their own computer, there is a chance that changes made can be overlooked or missed out on or even overwritten, right? Now, so that is the first one, messy collaboration via emails. Now, the second one is actually uh, time wasted due to uploading, downloading and uploading of uh, documents, right? So as emails are uh, uh, due to this messy collaboration that we talked about at the start, right? Staff or team members find themselves spending more time looking through emails and documents, downloading, figuring out which file or document is the latest and the most accurate one. Not only that, they also then spend their time attaching or uploading these files and documents into emails or other sh file sharing platforms in order to share it with other people. So time is wasted, is inefficient, right? And the third challenge of collaboration is unable to track version history. So as emails are better used as the medium of communication rather than for collaboration, it leads to difficulty in tracking version history of documents. So Staff or team members will usually resort to naming their file documents. I think uh, everyone here might be very familiar with this, where we name our documents in versions 1.0 and 1.1, right? And uh, there can be situations where staff or team members forget to rename a file with the new version name, or perhaps they also decide to not rename it. And this can cause confusion among team members that are trying to collaborate with each other, and this can lead to data loss as people overlook certain versions and they move forward with other changes that might not take into account the previous version uh, changes or amendments. So that is essentially what we picked out over the, the, the three challenges for collaboration. So now, what does Azoshare provide? How does Azoshare help companies facing these challenges? So firstly, for ease of collaboration, Azoshare has a check in and check out function. So with this feature, whenever a user is editing a document, the document will be checked out. So no other user will be able to open and edit the document through AdsoShare unless they download the document to their device. Now this feature helps preserve changes made and ensures that amendments or changes made to the document will not be overwritten. When the user has finished editing, the document, the user can then save and close the document and status will automatically be changed to check in by AdsoShare. And the next user can then come in and edit it. Now that is for the first feature. The second feature that we have is 
Azure Shared Desktop application is extremely easy to use and it makes it efficient. So it makes collaboration also seem so seamless, whereby once a document has been manually uploaded into Azure Share, users can then edit or amend that document directly through Azure Share. So they don't have to download it into their desktop, they can open it directly from Azure Share. Now, they will no longer have to waste time manually uploading, downloading documents from, from and to their devices as the Azure Share desktop application does it for them upon the user opening and closing the document through Azure Share. So there's automatic download and upload for documents through Azure Share. Now, also, the third one is having an organized list of version history. Now, Azure Share also has a comprehensive and organized list of version history. And this enables users to track a document's version history and restore its previous version with ease. So Azure Share allows a user to look back at all the version history, a list of the version history of a particular document, and the user is then able to choose which version they want to revert to. And this makes it easy, and this makes it simple and uh, easy to use. So this, I'm going to show you guys a, a short demonstration, right, on how Azure Share, the check-in and check-out feature works in a real-life scenario, okay? So as you can see here, right, there is John in this scenario. John is maneuvering the screen now. So you can see from this screen, John has access to a drive there called Project A. And within the drive, there is a recycle bin and there is a folder called PMP, all right? So now within PMP, there's actually a document called Project A, Project Management Plan. So that is where John and Jeremy are collaborating on this particular document within this Project A drive. Okay, so as you can see, there is this Project Management Plan document there. Now, from this perspective, John is going to start opening up this document, Project Management Plan and he's going to edit this document. Now, when John has opened this document to edit it, what you will see next is, how does Azure Share deal with this opening of a document? As you can see, let me pause here. The document is checked out now, and you can see that it's being checked out by a person named John, right? So because John is the person that opened up the document and is editing it. Now, now we're looking at it from the perspective of Jeremy. So Jeremy is collaborating with John on this document. So Jeremy has logged into his Azure Share and he also has access into this folder called PMP. And as you can see, he can also see the project management plan document. But there is a lock icon at the bottom left of the document, as you can see. And what this lock icon means that this lock icon shows that this document has been checked out by John, who is editing it at the moment. So now, Jeremy wants to edit the same document, and he double clicks on it. And Azure Share prompts Jeremy with a notification to say is that this document has been checked out by John and he will have to download this document in order to edit it. All right. Now, Jeremy can then choose whether to download it or not. If Jeremy chooses not to download it, he won't be able to open this document. But here in this scenario, Jeremy then decides to download the document into his device, his laptop device. So Jeremy here is creating a folder where he will then download this particular document into that folder. And there you go. The document has been downloaded into Jeremy's laptop device. Now, going back to John's view now, 
So he has he still has the document open and he has made a change v2. He has typed in version two there in this particular document. Now, John then goes ahead and closes the document. But as you can see, as he closes it, he, he gets prompted to save the document. And when he clicks save, the document is automatically uploaded back into ExoShare. And there isn't that lock symbol anymore on the document. The document is now checked in. All right, so now Jeremy then decides to open the document after John has closed it. And Jeremy then makes the changes to the document. As can be seen, he types in version 2.1. So as you can see from this demonstration, the opening and the closing of the documents is extremely seamless through ExoShare. And the user does not have to worry about downloading and uploading the document. They just have to double click to open and to close it, they just have to click on the X button. And there you have it. So once uh, the Jeremy has made the changes to the document, he just closes it, the document is uploaded into ExoShare. All right. So that is for the demonstration of the check in and check out function where it will ensure that changes made to a file is captured and it prevents people from overwriting a particular amendment or change to a file. Also, it gives you knowledge on who is editing the particular document at that point of time. So now let's move on to the second challenge that we have, managing data leakage or data loss. So within this challenge, there are multiple other uh, challenges faced by companies. So the first one will be lack of audit and traceability, right? So many of the file sharing platforms on the market do not grant companies the visibility into its users' activities. And this can lead to data leakage and data loss. This is because a staff or team member can easily share or delete a confidential file without the company's administrator or management knowledge. And there's no way that the company's administrator or management is able to trace what confidential files were shared or deleted, and this can lead to very serious consequences. Now, the second challenge is that the risk of hardware failure. Now, many companies still today, right, still rely very heavily on hardware, such as laptop devices, external USB drives, and even hard disk to share and store their company data. And they do not make a copy of this data anywhere else. So this is extremely dangerous because if any disaster were to occur, such as a corrupted hard disk or a missing USB drive, company data will be lost forever and will not be retrievable. So as a company that has 23 years of backup expertise and experience, we always advise our clients to back up their company data to ensure that they have an additional copy of the data on another platform, right? So that is a challenge that companies have these days. Now, the third challenge is also wasting time transferring documents, moving documents between desktop and online storage to work offline. Now, I think some of us do this as well, as there's no proper syncing between a certain file sharing platform and a user's laptop device, Users tend to spend a lot of time moving, downloading, moving documents around from their file sharing platform to their own laptop device in order to work offline. Now, this makes the whole process extremely, extremely inefficient as valuable time and effort is wasted here. So what does ExoShare do differently? How does ExoShare help companies facing these challenges? So now, firstly, ExoShare has a central administrator web portal which is only accessible by the company's administrator and not any other user. Now, this company administrator must be elected by the company, by the management of the company. And this person will then have access to something called the ExoShare Central Administrator Web Portal. 
And within this central administrator web portal, there is a comprehensive user audit report which tracks the activities of all of the company's user, users such as sharing, activities such as sharing, managing, and deleting files and documents are all tracked right, you, with this user audit report. Now, any sharing or deletion of files and documents can be traced back to a particular user. And this is very important for companies looking to manage and prevent data leakage and data loss. The next one is that the Azure Shared Desktop application allows users to sync their selected drives, folders, and files from Azure Shared to the user's laptop device. Now, with this real-time syncing that we have, any changes made to the document in Azure Shared will be reflected on the document uh, in the user laptop device. And this ensures that if there is any kind of hardware failure to the user laptop device, the real-time syncing has already occurred and whatever changes to that document would have been, a copy of it would have been stored in Azure Share. And the user will still be able to retrieve the document from Azure Share and hence no data will be lost. Now, with this syncing feature of Azure Share, users can also sync their selected drives, folders, and files from Azure Share to their laptop device. By doing so, users can then work on those files even if they do not have any internet connection. So now, I'm going to do another live uh, demonstration again, which will involve John and Jeremy as well, okay? So in this scenario, John is the company administrator and he has access to the Azure Share Central Administrator web portal, as you can see from the screen. Now, in order to access the Azure Share Central Administrator web portal, John will have to key in his credentials to log in. So here you can see John is keying in his credentials to log into his central administrator web portal. Now, once he logs in, John is able to see all the users that are within the Top Gun Azure Share environment. All right, so you can see there is Jeremy and there is a new colleague of his who is Alex. And we'll come to Alex after this. So now, to access right, the user audit report of Azure Share, there is a list of icons at the left of the portal and each icon does a specific function, right? You can manage your users, you can group your users, you can create policies, you can uh, tag documents. And from here, John is clicking on the user audit report icon. So as you can see from this, once he clicks on it, the user audit report appears and it shows you which user has logged into Azure Share. So John clicks on the icon and this user audit report appears. Now, John will be able to see all of Top Gun's user activities through this user audit report, such as sharing, login, managing, deleting, and many others. As you can see from the drop-down menu, there are multiple, multiple activities that John can monitor on behalf of Top Gun. Okay, now moving on to the next demonstration, the real-time syncing feature that we have in Azure Share. Now, this next short demonstration we'll be showing is the real-time sync feature. And here, we are looking at John's perspective as well. Now, John decides to add a drive called Project A to sync. He wants to sync this project A drive. So he hovers his mouse over the project A drive and he right clicks it. Okay, perhaps John is still deciding whether he wants to sync the project A drive, but eventually he does and he right clicks it and he enables the syncing feature to happen. Now, once the sync is complete, John can then see a green tick at the bottom right of the folders and files within the Project A drive. So 
So John is going to open the PMP folder. And as you can see, there is a green tick, green tick icon at the bottom of the document to show that this document has been synced to the user laptop's device. Now, what John is going to do next is, John is going to open up this document, this project management plan document through Ads of Share, and he's going to make changes to it. So as you can see, he has double clicked it and the document automatically opens up. So then John goes ahead and makes changes to the particular document. He then closes it and saves it. Now the project management plan document is automatically uploaded back into Adzo Share. Now, let's say John has to go to the airport to catch a flight to Singapore for a meeting. And he wants to edit the document during the flight. Now, what we're simulating here is a situation where John doesn't have internet access. So we are disabling the internet access now. So what John can do is because the Project A drive and all its content has been synced in real time, even without internet access on the flight to Singapore, John can still access the Adzo Share folder that is on his desktop, his laptop device, with the latest synced project management plan, as you can see, the amendments are recorded. And he can then open it up through the Windows Explorer on his laptop device and edit it. So no time is wasted. You can work anywhere, anytime. And it helps with this hybrid working model that companies are planning to implement moving forward. Now then the next challenge that we're going into is the lack of permission and role settings. Now what this means is that, firstly, there is no access to files or working from home or in the office. Now what does this mean? Now because of a hybrid working model, file sharing environments no longer just cater to office staff, but must also be able to cater to remote staff. So the remote staff must be granted access into the company's file storage to access the files. And when this access is not provided, the remote staff will not be able to carry out any work as they will not have any access to documents outside of the office. So the next challenge is the dependence on the in-house IT team to issue permissions to folders. Now users should not have to depend on the in-house IT team to issue permissions and roles to a user for a particular drive folder. And what Azoshare, which we will show later is that users should be able to manage it themselves to promote efficiency and to promote collaboration between uh, team members. And the third challenge is the risk of missing documents or files when working on documents in a company shared folder. Now, what this means is that with the lack of permission or role settings within a certain file sharing environment, there's a high risk of documents or file going missing as all users have the same permission or role in a company shared folder, and they can then easily share or delete company data without anybody knowing. So how does Azoshare tackle this? With Azoshare, team leaders in the company can be assigned as owners of a drive, right? Like project A was a drive. I could assign John as the team leader. And with that authority, team leaders such as John can then manage all of the folders within that particular drive which is project A, and he can then grant permission to both remote and on-site staff to access the folders in the drive in Azoshare. As you can see just now, John and Jeremy had no problems accessing the folders within the particular drive called project A. And it was down to John's uh, administration and management of that particular drive. Now, the next thing is that Azoshare allows for easy permission or role management. A user who created a folder is able to assign various roles such as owner, author, contributor, reader, or writer to his or her coworkers. Now, each of these roles have its own restrictions and authority, and the user no longer needs to go through the in-house IT team to assign these roles. 
This then enables the company's in-house IT team to focus on more substantial work and important work. The third thing that ExoShare does to counter these challenges is ExoShare allows for easy permission and role management. Now, a user who is the owner of a highly confidential folder or drive can easily assign, change, and revoke another user's permission to prevent deletion, to prevent sharing of highly confidential documents. And they can then also prevent any sort of data loss or data leakage through it. Now, I'll show you here in this, we'll be showing you a signing and revoking permission demonstration here. So now, the scenario today will be John has been told by his boss that a new joiner named Alex will be tasked with helping John on project A. So John was asked by his boss to share all of the documents related to project A with Alex. So we are looking at it from John's perspective here. All right, so John will be sharing the PMP folder with Alex. So as you can see, what John did was he right click on the folder and he click share and this uh, pop-up menu then comes up all right so now what john can decide what john can do here is now he has to key in alex's name into this pop-up box as alex is an internal user of exoshare his name comes up and all John has to do is, John now has to pick a row, a row access for Alex for this particular folder. Now, because Alex is a new joiner, John is afraid that Alex might accidentally change or delete documents, certain documents from this folder. So what John does is John grants Alex a contributor role, which allows him to edit, but not delete any kind of document within the PMP folder. All right, so now what John is going to do is John is going to choose the contributor role for Alex and he's going to add Alex to the list of users within this folder. And all John has to do then is click apply. And that's that. So now Alex has been added into this PMP folder. So what we'll do now is we'll move into Alex's perspective. All right. Now from, as can be seen from Alex's account, he can now see the PMP folder and he can then access the files and documents within the PMP folder. So now we move back into John's perspective. Now, a few months later, Alex failed to perform in his job and Top Gun has decided to let Alex go, right? So John's boss then tells John to say, remove all of Alex's access to Project A documents. And what John needs to do is he needs to go into Project A, go into the PMP folder, click on Manage, remove Alex's access from the PMP folder, and click apply. And with that, Alex's access into this particular folder is removed, as you can see from Alex's perspective here. He no longer sees the PMP folder as part of his account. So, the next challenge that we're looking at is the difficulty in sharing files securely, right? Now, the lack of approval for file and document sharing. Now, file, and, file sharing environments implemented by companies lack the approval process for sharing highly confidential documents. And as long as users have the permission or role to share a file, they are then able to share any file no matter the, how highly confidential that file is. This can then lead to data loss and in some situations, financial loss even for the company. The second one, the second challenge is the lack of authentication from a recipient. Now, file sharing environment places a lot of emphasis on the sender's identity compared to the recipient's identity. 
most of the time it assumes that as the sender is the person keying in the recipient's information, the recipient is the right person receiving the data. However, there can be situations where the intended recipient is not the person that first receives and opens the file and document. And this can be very risky for a company dealing for a company, especially when they're dealing with highly confidential documents. So how does ExoShare then help companies face these challenges? Also, the third challenge that we have here is also a difficulty in sharing large files and documents. I think we all experience it. I think I mentioned it previously also, is that emails have restrictions on how large a certain file can be attached to an email. And we always have this difficulty where we have to constantly zip our files um, and attach it to an email. And it, this time it is inefficient, and it's, waste, it's a waste of time having to unzip and zip folders and files uh, and to just send it across via an email. So how does ExoShare then help companies facing these challenges? So ExoShare has a workflow approval feature and can only be enabled by the owners of the drive or folder. So the owner of the drive or folder, just like John, can choose to apply the workflow feature to an entire file or a single document only. So you can apply to an entire folder or a single document. Then this workflow approval feature can prevent the user from sharing a file if he or she does not obtain the required approval to do so. And this approval will be provided by the owner of the drive or the folder or the document. Now there's two, the second thing that ExoShare has is a two-factor authentication. Now this two-factor authentication can be enabled by ExoShare. And when this feature is enabled during sharing of files and documents, users can then key in the recipient's handphone number into ExoShare and a one-time password will then be sent to the recipient's handphone number upon the recipient opening up the document. So this will help to authenticate the recipient's identity and ensure that the document has been shared to the intended recipient. Now, the third solution that ExoShare has is by using ExoShare to share your files, users no longer have to worry about the size of the file that they are sharing. ExoShare enables users to easily share, no matter what the size is, large files, small files, as a link. And it is easy and your the intended recipient, all they have to do is just click on that link and they'll be able to open and access that particular file. So we're going to do a short demonstration here of how file sharing is done. L large file sharing is done by a link, via a link. So again, John needs to share a project chart here that is one gig in size to Jeremy. And John is having trouble sharing it over email due to the size of the file. So with Enzo Share, John can now share such large files to Jeremy with ease. So what John has to do is right click the file, click on share. And all he needs to do is key in Jeremy's name, email address into Enzo Share. And once he's done that, he just click share. Now, what happens here is that Jeremy then gets an email notifying him that John has shared a file with him. And in order to access the shared file, he'll have to click the link in the email notification. He can then choose and whether he wants to access the file via the ExoShare desktop application or the ExoShare web portal because he's a user of ExoShare. And this time around, Jeremy decides to access the file via the ExoShare web portal. So what he has to do is he has to log in with his credentials. So he keys in his username and his password. And he can then access the particular file. Simple, straightforward, easy. Now, we are also going to look at two-factor authentication, right? So here, what we're going to see is that John wants to share a tender document for project A with Jeremy. Now, due to the nature of the document, John wants to ensure that the person opening this and viewing this document is in fact Jeremy. So when John shares the tender document for project A with Jeremy, 
what he has to do is he inputs Jeremy's name, email address, and this time around, he also keys in Jeremy's mobile number. So as you can see here, John is keying in Jeremy's mobile number. So once he has keyed in Jeremy's mobile number, he then adds Jeremy to the share list and he then shares the document. And the file is shared successfully. Now, what happened here is that Jeremy then gets an email notification to say is that John has shared with him a the project tender, project A tender document. Now, what Jeremy is going to do here is go click on the link to access the file. And when he clicks on the link, he is then prompted to key in the OTP, the one-time password. So Jeremy will then click on this generate OTP button and a generated one-time password will then be sent to Jeremy's phone through the phone number that John previously keyed in. Now upon receiving the one-time password through his phone, Jeremy will then key in the OTP number, the one-time password number, and once he's done so, he'll be able to see the document. Now this ensures that the person opening up this document is in fact Jeremy and not anyone else. Now, the last challenge that we'll be discussing today is that is faced by companies implementing a hybrid working model is the difficulty in receiving large confidential files and documents securely. Now, email file size restriction. Companies that do not implement any file sharing tools within their environment will have to rely on sharing of files or documents via email. If a vendor or partner of the company intends to share multiple large files or documents via email, they will have to zip those files to ensure that the file documents are not more than 10 to 20 megabytes. So therefore, using email as a file sharing tool, as mentioned previously, is highly ineffective, time consuming, and restrictive. Now, the risk of using public file transfer platforms. Due to email restriction, companies then decide to turn to file sharing software that are free, like WeTransfer or TransferNow. However, a question that you have to ask is how secure are these platforms? Do they keep a copy of your file as you upload and share it with your recipient? So how does AzureShare help companies facing these challenges? AzureShare has a feature called File Request Link. This feature enables users to send a link to a recipient and upon receiving the link, that the recipient is able to open and upload documents into that link. It can be very useful for situations where companies have tender practices and require vendors to submit multiple large or files or documents, such as audit reports, system design, proposals, and things like that. Now, to strengthen the security of this file request link feature, Azure also allows users to determine what the restrictions are for the file request link. What I mean by that is user is able to set a file type or file size restriction. And with this restriction, recipients are not able to upload those types and size of files into Azure Share. Not only that, uh, the users can set up a two-factor authentication to ensure that the link is shared to the intended recipient and that it is the intended recipient who is uploading those documents. So we'll do a short demo right, uh, for this scenario of a file request link. Now, after John and Jeremy have reviewed the tender document for project A and presented it to the management of Top Gun, the tender document is now published to the public. In this file request link, John creates a secure file request link to be sent to the vendors <coughs> participating in the tender for project A. During the creation of the file request link, John can set policies and restrictions such as file size and file types. So if the tender for a project A does not require vendors to submit pictures or videos, John will be able to restrict JPEG files and MP4 files. Now, once he has created the secure file request link, he then sends it to all the vendors that are part of this tender. <coughs> he can also set 
an expiry date for this secure file request link if it needs to. So here you can see John keying in the vendor's names and email addresses that will be participating in this particular tender. So now, the vendors of the tender will then receive an email, right, notification from John. Sorry, I think I went backwards. Okay, so what happens here is that John is keying in the vendor's email address and the name of the vendor. And he can then set things such as expiry date for the secure file request link. So once he's done so, he can then share the particular link to the vendors. So what happens now is that the vendors of the tender will then receive an email notification from John from Top Gun requesting them to upload their documents into the secure file request link for project A tender. And once they click on that link, they can then start to upload these documents. Now, if the vendor tries to upload a restricted document, he won't be able to do so due to the policy that has been set, but the vendor can, will be able to upload any other files or types of files, size of files that are not restricted. As you can see, the vendor tries to upload a JPEG file and even an MP4 file, and Exoshare does not allow it to do so. However, when the vendor uploads a PEG file, a PEG file, it is allowed because the policy does not restrict it. Okay. So this concludes my webinar presentation on the challenges faced by companies implementing hybrid working models and how Exoshare is able to help companies resolve these challenges. Thank you, Nicholas, Thank you, Nicholas. Okay. for the comprehensive look into Excel Share Solution. Now, I like that you relate the various features to real-world situation. It's a wonderful presentation there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for your attention to our webinar. I'm sorry, we're going to be overrunning this webinar session a little bit, but please bear with me. We are already at the end. We would like to really give out the lucky draw, okay? So now, but first, we do have questions that we need Nicholas to answer. Nicholas, very quickly, uh, please share with us, how does the document version control being implemented in ExoShare? How does the document version control being implemented in ExoShare? Can the document uploaded to ExoShare be accessed by multiple users on the same time for collaboration? Can the document uploaded to ExoShare be accessed by multiple user on the same time for collaboration? No. So the document, uh, why it is created this way is that, uh, the answer is no, and why it's created this way is to ensure that, uh, to prevent overwriting of uh, information, right? So we do not want people to overlap their amendments to a particular document. What we want to do is we want to track every single amendment or editing done to a particular document. So what will happen is that like, like the check in and check out function, of course you can turn it off, right? It is a feature that you can either turn on or off, but when it is turned on, th that is essentially what it's trying to prevent because there can be situations where I open a document, perhaps Francis opens a document, the same document, and we are editing it at the same time and amendments are lost due to it. And that's how data loss is, happens. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent that and ensure that the collaboration is as uh, easy and as seamless as possible. So I think straightforward answer is no. Uh, however, the check-in and check-out function can be switched off, but there is a risk of people overwriting amendments. And that's not something that we would encourage companies to do. Okay. I hope that answers your question that was asked by Inche Ahmad Fadli. And the next question is, uh, two-factor authentication was brought up by Stephen, but you have already answered that quite well. Thank you so much. The next question is also by Inche 
Ahmad Fadli, can a certain document or folders be shared with external parties outside the organization for projects, auditing and collaboration, example, tender management, which need to be shared with external party for tender submission process? Yes. Okay. So the document can be shared externally, right? Uh, through ExoShare. So you do not have to zip up documents any further. You can sell, you can share a particular uh, entire folder if you want to. Just for pro let's say it's a project A tender, you can create a folder within your office organization called Project A Tender, and you can put in the document that you want your external parties to be looking at, and you can then share that folder to multiple external parties. Right. And with the audit log in the back end, you are able to track all this. And um, from the external point of view, they are able to just open the documents via link and they'll be able to access and download all these documents. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. Uh, we do have one more okay. question. I think this question is more for Andy. Andy, what will SNS hybrid work model look like? Very briefly, can you please share with us? Uh, thanks, uh, Francis. Yes, actually, SMS has been practicing a type of uh, hybrid work model for quite some time, even long before the uh, the pandemic started. And it is a, um, a role-based model, meaning it depends on the role that you play within the company. So obviously, uh, a receptionist or a sales and marketing person or a computer engineer will not all follow the same model. It will be tailored uh, to, to your the particular role that, that, that you're playing. And I don't see this changing in, in the near term, but of course um, it is, uh, the final decision is up to the senior management uh, and uh, of course, uh, in consultation with the staff which are affected uh, by the different models. Um, and I think that that will be the situation going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. All right, ladies All right, and gentlemen. Uh, last question, yeah, very last question. And Nicholas has to answer this very quickly. <laughs> How does ExoShare deal with sharing of very highly confidential documents or files? Yeah, so I think I touched on that in terms of the workflow process where workflow approval, which will allow owners of a document or a folder or even a drive to give approvals prior to a user sharing a highly confidential document. So that is how ExoShare is able to deal with it and will not allow unauthorized sharing of highly confidential documents. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Andy. So we can you can scan these QR codes if you are interested in purchasing ExoShare or even using our free trial. But this is the promo code for Exo15 for this particular webinar, where if you were to purchase ExoShare now, you key in this Exo, uh, promo code, you will get a discount for your purchase. Okay, wonderful. So with the code EXO15, they get 15% off, I'm told. Thank you, Nicholas. What a wonderful, yeah. wonderful gift. So congratulations again to all the winners. Our webinar has ended. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Nicholas, for your sharing. Goodbye, everyone, Goodbye. and stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.